very quiet in here. All right, let's get to work. Hey, Stel, I'm looking over these ledgers, and they seem to confirm everything Mr. Amici was saying. I wonder how that made Olivia feel. Hell hath no fury, right? What happened? Who's that? Oh. What kind of password protection is this? Is it this and appetizers, I think? Oh. Uh, appetizer. Entree. Dessert. Printing error. Well, that's not good. I think I should try something else. Good, I can see. All right, let's see. We need that. Print of paper. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Well, it looks like Chef Amici was telling the truth. That's not to say he was very honest in business. Ouch. Alright, what else we need? We need a cup. We're a place to put one. Okay. Um, umbrella. No, we don't need it. Okay, that kind of stuck out to me. That email from Ezio Moretti looks like something we should follow up on. The only problem is finding him. Actually, that won't be a problem at all. Why not? Because we've been running 24-hour surveillance on this guy for the last 18 months. You're kidding. I wish I was. We got nothing so far. But we do know where he likes to have lunch. Let's go. What the hell is that? Um... Oh, 
Easy on Moretti? Got it. Who's asking? Hey, buddy. Detective Don Flack. And this is Stella Bonacera, Crime Lab. NYPD Blue. Show is never the same after Caruso left. Mr. Moretti. Honey, call me easy. <laughs> I'm gonna save you guys a lot of time and surveillance tape. You're standing here because you guys are a credit to your department. Bravo. You've been able to link the Conradine Corporation to some particular financial interests controlled by yours truly. I like this guy already. I am a businessman. And why am I a successful businessman? Because I'd like to spread my money around like seeds. And then I see what takes root, what grows. You know what I'm talking about? Why were you hiding your investment in Tuto di Amici? Why make it look like Andrew was investing all the money by himself? I just didn't want to scare people away from the restaurant thinking they might go there one night, having a nice meal, and then some mook comes flying out of the bathroom like Michael Corleone and starts shooting. <laughs> I really love this guy. Anyway, um, first we want this one to make records. Okay, nice. You're getting warmer. You're very close to the evidence you'll need to leave me the hell alone. Yes, we need. My niece. You know what they say, love is blind? Olivia really liked Andrew. And I didn't approve too much because the guy was married, but I figured, not my business. Yeah, that's right. We're going to spread that shit around. Now what? You think like I'm a bouncer here, checking IDs? None? Okay, uh, let's see. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, that was Andrew's way of telling people, you know, this is the place to eat. Okay, what about a restaurant? You guys are good. Now, if you look under a file named Bella Scusa, you'll see the breakdown of my financial participation in Tutto di Amici. Believe me, it was a mutually beneficial relationship between myself and Marcel and Andrew. Potentially, it could have been very, very lucrative. That's great. His final review. I knew Andrew would come through. Okay, good. Um, what else do I have to show him? I think I gotta show him about the broken dish. I doubt it. I really doubt it. Like Mom always said, you break it, you own it. But I didn't break it, so what can I tell you? Okay, not that's not it. Um, the wine? Don't tell nobody, but I will admit a slight preference for the Chilean wines over the Italian. What, is that a crime? No, nope, still not yet. Damn, at least I didn't get nothing wrong yet, but still, I'm not getting much of anywhere. I guess next to the bloody napkin. You gotta be kidding, trying to hand me a bloody napkin. What, you think I'm an idiot here? You think you're gonna get me to smear my DNA all over that thing so you can pull me in for murder? You guys are dumber than the feds. Damn, well, that wasn't that one. You see my name on there? No, because as you can see here, I'm not into these new fancy dancy restaurants. I like hot dogs. Uh, then this one? Don't look at me, I didn't do it. Damn, I think I showed them everything I have and I'm still not getting anywhere. Hmm. Big deal. Now, because it distresses me to oh, those. say, your department continues to engage in the unconscionable practice of racially profiling Italian Americans such as myself. You presume that I am connected with organized crime. And subsequently, because I invested in Andrew's restaurant, you erroneously conclude that I must have had something to do with Andrew's untimely death. Oh wow, so he had more to say, I'm an idiot. <laughs> If by racial profiling you mean the 12 federal RICO indictments? Lies! Look, um, I wanted to be in the restaurant business. Legitimately. Why would I kill my potential cash cow? Everybody would eat where the guy told them to eat, and he was going to tell them to eat at Tutto di Amici. Maybe he changed his mind? Maybe he didn't want to participate in a fraud? Fraud? Try First Amendment. He's right, though. He has no reason to kill him because the guy wrote the review saying that the restaurant would be good, so he had no reason to kill him. So this guy, he's innocent, too. Do you have an alibi for the night before last? Call the FBI. 
I'm sure they'll let you borrow the pictures they took of me taking my niece to the Sandstone Cinema. Your niece, Olivia. That's right. Plus, you should get a warrant and search the office at Tutto di Amici. I got absolutely no reason to see Andrew six feet under. Just look for a file labeled Bella Scusa. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got a hot dog with my name on it. I love him. He was a cool character. Sorry, Stella. Looks like you've lost another one of your suspects. The wife is telling the truth. Thanks, Adam. I don't want to let you go without a parting gift. He never found Mr. Lord's cell phone, which doesn't mean he didn't own one. True. And the payphone is located only two blocks away from the Kindling restaurant. Speaking of food... I'm Sarah. Hey, Stell. I got a call back from one of the patrons at the Kindling last night. You gotta hear this for yourself. Go ahead, Katie. Hi, my name is Katie. Um, Detective Flack wanted me to tell you about the fight last night at the restaurant. Oh, please do. Go ahead. I did see an altercation between two men. Actually, it was between the owner of the restaurant and this other fat man. They were arguing about molecules. Does that make any sense? My mother thought she heard them fighting about a bad review or something like that. That's fine, Katie. Thanks for the call. No problem. Glad I could help. Well, that was interesting. Absolutely. <laughs> No one around here is familiar with the term molecular gastronomy. Unless you are, we should probably do a little research online. All right, let's go. Microscopes. Pots. Whisk. Oysters. Okay, so we're basically looking at a bunch of food hackers making a high-tech geek cuisine. I could be into that. Nice. Our food critic was quite prolific, but we need to narrow down our search to a review that might have motivated more than just an angry letter to the editor. Alrighty. Lollipops, mango. Oh, nope. Onions. Chicken. I doubt the Kindling restaurant would have survived another review like that. Really? These things matter in a city with 10,000 restaurants. Sebastian had a motive and he was quick to point the finger at Itsuma Reddy. He even admitted that he was familiar with the property, having almost leased it. I'd say, time to get yourself a warrant to look around Sebastian's restaurant. I was gonna say the same thing. Nice. I had some questions about the contents of the victim's stomach. Why's that? 
They seem like a strange combination of foods. Uh, maybe just me. <laughs> it's not like I eat well, you know? Anyway, you want to take a look under the microscope? Let's... Glycol along with traces of methanol and propylene glycol. Someone's been having problems with the radiator. Wow. We're looking at the components of antifreeze? Bingo. And I don't know the last time someone ordered antifreeze for dessert. We definitely have several site-specific impurities here too. So, if you can find the antifreeze or maybe a trace of it somewhere, I bet I can match it back to the batch of coolant which killed our food critic. Wow. Where do we even begin? Keep your eyes open. We need to find something that ties Sebastian to the antifreeze. Let's do it. Okay. I do not want to eat what this guy's got cooking. <laughs> really? Looks nasty. It's not gonna cut it. Okay. Looks like this guy likes to play with fire. Wow. Looks like something's missing here. All right. Good. Let's see what he was trying to hide. Boom. I'll take these back to the lab if we can get some trace off the apron. We might just have our killer. Uh-oh. I got a hunch. We just found what we needed. Let's hope you're right. I'm going to get back to the lab and confirm it. That was nice and easy. Hey, Stella. Glad you're back. We started working on the evidence you picked up. Uh, just check the monitors if you need to know anything. This one, cool. We need to analyze the stain and spill patterns on the apron. Can you figure out the ingredients for me and let me know what you find? We'll do. This one's right up there. 
Oh yeah, our special of the day, antifreeze. Got it. And now we can compare the food stains on the apron to our victim's stomach contents. See if the menus match. If they do, then we'll compare the site-specific impurities in the antifreeze that was used to poison Mr. Lorge to the traces of antifreeze we found on the apron. See if you can get the two images to match up. Let's do it. Gotcha. Everything's a match. The stains on Sebastian's apron have the identical impurities as the antifreeze that poisoned our Vic. I'd say book him, Dano. I, or, or not. Um, yeah. Guess we got our, we have our, uh, killer. Grab him. You know, someone very wise once said, before you criticize a man, walk a mile in his shoes. That way, when you do criticize him, you'll be a mile away and have his shoes. Was that supposed to be funny? Sebastian, you hated Andrew Lords, didn't you? I mean, even in front of a crowded restaurant, you couldn't conceal your disgust for the man. I could care less about the man and his opinions. I told you we had an argument. Yes, it was animated, but he wasn't killed in my restaurant. Yeah, but you killed him in somebody else's restaurant. Like I told you before, Andrew's restaurant reviews were taken far too seriously. I'm sure he made quite a few enemies. Like you, for instance. No. Sure. Oh, please. You said yourself you and Andrew had disagreements. Yes, we did. But they didn't rise to the level of violence. You sure about that, buddy? Are you kidding me? Sebastian, we have eyewitnesses to your argument with Andrew. It definitely rose to the level of violence. Okay, yes, it got physical. Look, Ms. Bonacera, the man is dead. I didn't want to embarrass him or his family. His wife means a lot to me, and don't twist that around in your head either. Eloise has encouraged my development as a chef every step of the way. I didn't mean to lie to you. I thought it was more like a sin of omission. Okay. I don't understand why you aren't talking to Marcel. You're sitting over there looking at me like I did something, but I didn't do anything. Yes, I didn't particularly like the guy. And yes, we got into it once. But do you really think I would jeopardize everything I've worked for just to settle some some kind of stupid score with Andrew Lords? Yes. Anyway. Let's do the apron. Seriously, you're showing me an apron? Ah, that was way off. See? That's what I'm talking about. Andrew could be an absolute SOB sometimes. Old-fashioned? Hell, he was a downright gastronomic dinosaur. Wholly lacking in imagination, incapable of appreciating vision. Still, I would never wish death upon a man. Just a better palate. We just on the apron, but I just the wrong thing. I guess is this here to antifreeze? Your apron. Epithelials and blood confirmed it. And then there's this. Do you know what those stains are from? They could be anything. Well, 
I don't know what you were cooking up, but I'll tell you what they're from. They're made of ethyl methanol propylene glycol. Were you having engine trouble in the kitchen? I helped one of my waiters with his car day before yesterday. Radiator was overheating, so I suppose I might have gotten some antifreeze on me then. Why is that relevant? It's relevant because that's what killed the guy. But it looks like I showed him something else. Uh, crap. What am I supposed to do? Andrew Lords was poisoned. Someone concealed the poison in his last meal. Someone concealed it so well, it was concealed down to a molecular level. And that someone was you. That was close, I was lost. <laughs> the man was out to destroy me! So, I challenged the man! He agreed! But did I believe him? Did I care? We met at the Tudo di Amici! I knew the place very well, and I cooked him a molecular masterpiece! Guaranteed to satisfy even the most discriminating palate! My own, of course! I can tell you, by the end, Andrew just couldn't take another bite. Bon appetit. There you go. And that was the second case. Oh boy, this one I kind of flubbed up a lot, but still, I think I did alright. I did okay, I did okay. <laughs> But that was a pretty good one also. That, was, that wasn't that half bad. So I hope you enjoyed the second case. We'll be continuing the third case pretty soon. And uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. This is Clicks of Charlie Dragons signing off.